so we're back and uh you know it's been about it's been about an hour since I um got back on and I kind of finished up what I wanted to do was add some more effects add just some different dynamics to change the beat up a little bit and then you can switch in and switch out you can go into the you know piano roll and You know, you can go into the piano roll and switch out a bunch of things, use different um, sounds, whatever. I mean, it, the possibilities are really endless, you know, because first, uh, first of all, you know, Poise has is, is got 16 banks. I think it has more banks than that, but at least it has layers. And even if it doesn't have more banks than that, you know, you can stack things. You can um, just open up another... You know, if you want to open up another version of or another instance of Poise, you can do that no problem. So, I mean, it's really kind of everything's limitless, just like with anything. You know, you just have to really learn to understand everything. So, what I've done is I've um, added another kick, and I mean a clap and, and another snare. I mean another uh, kick, another clap, another kick. And so, in the pre-chorus, it kind of changes up on you a little bit. Um, with those, with those, uh, drums there. And, uh, I just went into the piano roll. And, uh, right here is where the kicks were. See right there. But then I, I dropped them down, chained them up. And over here was the snare. Uh, but then I placed that with a clap, but a little bit different cadence. Um, the cadence for the drums is the same though, so so I'm gonna probably gonna go in and just change that a little bit up. So I think I just want to go in. I want to kill these right here just before the snaps, just before the. Uh, So all I did was uh, when you right click, you can erase, and when you double click the left, double double left click, you can add, you can run, and you can right click and erase it. You can erase several at a time if you want by right click and dragging like that. See, I'm gonna undo that, and that's all I did. So just change the cadence up a little bit on there. You know the claps are different after that. You know. Take that one out too. Just changing it up a little bit. So now we get this instance right here. So, you know, all you're doing is, I think the hardest thing, the easiest thing is to make the, the easiest thing to do is to make your loop or to make your eight bars or your four bar loop. I think it's harder to be more creative, switch it up, you know, change things around, use effects here and there, add different elements to just give your production a more overall produced feel versus just putting a loop together and throwing it in there you know what I mean I'm not there's no way I'm like a great producer but you know what I mean at least like I try to get better and better and I think that's what you got to do you got to try to get better and better and then if you try your damnedest get better and better you'll see yourself developing you know what I mean so uh, one of those things is understanding chord progressions and how they work and Having a good ear and being able to listen to what's being played and how to play 
to the feel of what's being played. So here's the beginning, and uh, we'll just run this loop before we start make, putting in the song mode. things towards the end and I was gonna add effects in there but I'm not gonna add effects until later on um, until I get all the waves going and then I'll start adding effects but as you see um, so we got a pretty long song it stops at 416 which is really good um, the third verse or break is only um, 
eight bars, then it goes back into the chorus twice. So, uh, you know what I mean? And you're good. And then that's how easy, you know, it is to kind of just put it together. Um, so then all we got to do now is, uh, now we got in the song mode. So we're just going to split these. We're just going to go in and split these up here into audio and MIDI tracks. So each one of these is going to um, split into, a, I'm going to split into a separate instrument track. You don't have to do it like this. You can leave them in there. Um, but I like to be able to, it helps me be able to tell what's going on as far as MIDI and audio and everything and what's peaking, what's not peaking. So it's just a little bit easier for me. Um, and then of course some of these, some of these are multi-temporal. So you got to be able to know, um, which ones are. So all I do is, uh, take my MIDI tracks and I bunch my MIDI tracks together like so and then any any audio track with actual information like this guitar loop here is going to go up to the top so I have all my clips together and then this is an audio track but now it's together with all these audio tracks and then um and you can tell because they have these little MIDI signals right here. This is just a straight audio, and this is an audio track that's connected to a MIDI track with that little symbol right there. See? Um, so you got to be able to tell how many, uh, how many instruments you're using each. And this one I'm using. Contact five, this rig work, urban workstation. So I'm using two here. So I'm going to need two audio tracks for contact. And I already have one. And then all these other ones only take up one audio track. Okay. And then this poise right here, you just open this up and you can see that this is taking 10. Um, so therefore I need nine more tracks for the drums and I need one more track for the contact. So if I just go in here and I insert uh, multiple tracks. First, before I do that though, I'm going to open up my bus panel. And I'm going to insert a stereo bus. And then click insert and hit it uh, three times. This is all I really need is, I really don't have to separate them that right, right now actually. I just send them all to one bus. So I'm actually not going to separate them right now. But I am going to send them to a master bus. So I'm going to delete that bus. I'm just going to send them all to a master right now. And, uh, because all I want to do really is I'm going to create a stereo track version of it. And so I just want it to sound, I want to be able to put a limiter on it so it can sound really good. You know what I mean? And it doesn't have to be all the way turned up just so it prevents, uh, just so it prevents anything from peaking. So let's put it on 3 dB right now. And that'll boost it up. Get it sounding pretty crazy. Close that up. And then now that I have the instrument tracks separated from the MIDI tracks, I'm going to add the, the number of tracks that I need. So I'm going to insert multiple, in, multiple tracks. And I need 10 more audio tracks. And then I'm going to send it to the master. I don't need a MIDI track. Click OK. Um, this is going to be another contact, just so we know. Five, two. So we know what these are going to. And the poise should probably be on the bottom since it's going to have the most tracks. And then I'm going to bring one more up here just under the contact um, I'm going to bring this boys down right there that's going to be my last track 
Um, actually, let me change that back. I'm going to make that the first one. No, let me change that. Go back. Okay. So now all you have to do is just assign these um, to where they go. So let's listen. Okay, so that's going to be your arpeggio keys. And this is going to be keys. Okay. Sorry, arpeggio. Just put arpeggio right there. And uh, open up the inspector here. Audio is going to go to the master. Matter of fact, all of them are going to go to the master. So you need to change those tags. So click that. It'll go to the master. Go down. Master. Make sure all these go to the master. Those are the new ones that we have. Okay. So now we're going to assign these tracks because we know these are keys. Um, so the end is coming from contact, and the first one's already taken. This is the first stereo track right here. So then you just go to the second stereo track right there, and now you see that the the icon has changed there, so it's been assigned to a different one. Um, so the same thing with these right here. And you can go here and just tell it that you want it to be poised. And the first one's already assigned, so you just take the second stereo track. And you see that they're changing. Now, easier way to do that is expand these. Change this one right here to mix. I mean, sorry, in out. And then just go to your inbox, click here, go to your inbox, and then you can just kind of toggle, you know, to where you're looking for. So this is the third one. This is the fourth one. This is the fifth one. This is the sixth one. This is the seventh one. Eight. We should go. We should go all the way up to ten. Nine. Ten. Because we have now all these are assigned. They have different icons. They're all assigned to MIDI tracks. Okay. If they weren't assigned to MIDI tracks, then they would have this. This one right here. Um, and now all we have to do is go into the um, VSTs themselves and assign it. So this one's already, you go on, on contact, this output's already assigned to Stereo 1. We just need to go here and create a new mask, create a new uh, create a new output. So all you gotta do is create a separate master output channel called Roads and and then you got to go into your mix, your output mixer here, and assign this. This is a new channel here. Assign it to a new one. And this. Just go here and assign it to a new one. So go here. And we should be able to click OK.